Hey everybody, we Hi. are back again here in the studio. We are now switching to English because our next guest is based in the US and uh, some of you may know him from the last tech talk that he already gave with us. So Kevin McRail is the principal evangelist at Dito Web and he uh, helps organization migrate, manage and secure their systems in the cloud. He is also a Google G Suite top contributor, a Google developer expert, and Google ambassador. We know that he's very much into everything Google, basically. And uh, we already experienced his knowledge like in his last talk. And we said uh, we cannot miss out uh, mm -hmm. on a talk of him. And uh, yeah, last time he was covering like all Google Cloud changes. And this was like a really long talk because they happened so much. And we said, Kevin, you have like 40 minutes. So is it uh, somehow possible to give a talk there? And uh, we now focus on Google <laughs> Workspace, if I'm right. So um, yeah, he has a bit more uh, focus on Workspace for this talk. But we are pretty happy that he's back again with us. And yeah, Kevin. What's new for Google Workspace in 2020? Yeah, thanks so much. Well, you know, last time I gave this talk, uh, I covered, uh, you know, pretty much a lot of the material. And now I've added two more months since the last time I did it. So if you saw it last time, uh, this will be updated and it will be even faster so I can try and fit it into the amount of time we have. So uh, for anybody who's watching, you know, please don't worry about uh, writing notes. We will publish the slides and whatnot and uh, the resources and whatnot. So you can really come up to speed on what it's there. But yeah, uh, exactly. So, you know, what's new in Google Workspace for 2020? So first of all, you've probably picked up uh, some of the main changes. But uh, before we get to that, uh, just a little bit about me. As you mentioned, I work at Dido uh, and I'm very proud of my work in the Google sphere. Uh, I love talking to people on LinkedIn. So, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn under Kevin A. McGrail, and you'll see that avatar as a can of Canadian off-brand spam. Uh, so you'll know you have found my profile. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me. Just mention uh, this event and, you know, let me know. And, you know, we can chat more about anything Google-related, technology, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned, the, the starting out, the big news uh, was for G Suite. Uh, it started off about October 7th or 8th. I can't remember now. Uh, but G Suite is now Workspace. So hence the, the new title for the slide. Uh, there were really three big changes for that. So, of course, uh, you know, new logos, as you can see, you know, you have the, the, the Gmail, the calendar, the drive, uh, as, as well as um, Uh, keep and meet. Uh, additionally, what you get is you get really that unified user experience. You're starting to see this now with Gmail having uh, chat and uh, meet built in on the left-hand side, more use in the right-hand side. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, the new branding, as we mentioned, uh, also more additions. So there'll be uh, more tailored solutions, uh, essentials and startup and basic and business and all this stuff has all expanded. Uh, and finally, uh, the big thing, you know, is that uh, this hasn't quite happened for everybody uh, by the end of the year it should be rolling out for even the workspace for nonprofit customers so you'll start to to see that as well uh, and additionally now with google workspace you know something one people a lot of people haven't really um, caught up on is this concept of editors so Uh, a lot of people call it like docs and or docs and sheets or docs and drive, uh, but really Google has nine editors that fall underneath workspace. So, you know, docs, sheets, slides, uh, drawings, forms, site, Google Keep, Jam, and Google Meet. And if you're wondering, like, for example, why uh, Google Keep and Google Meet have Google in front of them, whereas the others don't, it's for uh, a lack of confusion with other products that are on the market. So those are specifically called out that way. But these are all editors. And you might be saying, well, how is Google Meet an editor? So uh, if you're not familiar with that, I'll show you a little bit about that as we go through the meeting or go through this thing. So additionally, uh, one of the great things that's happened is that Google, oh, oh quite a while ago now, bought a, a TLD called Dot New. And uh, you know, one of the neat things you can do with that uh, that dot new TLD is if you want to start a meet or you want to start a new document or you want to start a new Jamboard, all you have to do is go to docs.new or jam.new, et cetera, sheets.new in your uh, web browser in the URL, and uh, it will automatically start you up with a new document. So great little tip uh, to get you started. But 
with that said, and the kind of the uh, the update on uh, Google Workspace, what was previously Google G Suite, uh, let's start off with the first quarter 2020 and just kind of talk about the changes that happened uh, starting then. So we're going all the way back to January, but before I do that, I will set the tone a little bit and just talk about the fact that everything I talk about here is all publicly available information. I don't talk about private information and whatnot. And towards that end, uh, you know, I was an original tester with the Google, uh, the Google Home, uh, and a lot of times when I'm doing that, I have to ask Googlers about certain things because I'll forget if it's public information or not yet, or I just wanted to find out if it's public. And I was talking about the Google Home. They were asking me about how it was going, and I told them I was very polite to it and that I find myself saying thank you to it when it, it answers a question. And they said, oh, that's really interesting. You'll, you'll be interested to find out. We've got a new product coming out called Google Pretty Please. It's designed to make children understand manners better and things like that. And I said, that's awesome. Can I talk about that on stage later today? And they had to go off and go talk to some managers and come back and they said, yes, this particular one, you can talk about it later today. Uh, it's going to be general availability on, on Thursday of that week, uh, but don't post your slides until after the, the public announcements made. So I said, okay, that's fine. I got up, I did my speech and I said, that's really cool. They're releasing Google pretty please uh, to help our children become more polite to their future Google overlords. Um, that is the only time Google has ever yelled at me for uh, talking about things on stage. Uh, so I usually try to be pretty careful. I will tell you one more hint, which is that there'll be, I hope, a pretty big announcement for Google in Germany. Um, I can't tell you much more than that. I couldn't get approval to do it, but keep an eye on the, the, the blogs. There's a resources at the end of the slides that you can go through that you can keep an eye on things, or you can email me on January 1 and I'll tell you whether or not the announcement was made, uh, but uh, keep an eye on that. So. Key thing here, though, like I said, publicly available information, but I hope you find the insight that I give you is useful. And in the 45 minutes to an hour here, you've learned a lot about what's coming with Google. So big thing, uh, we start off the year with the Consumer Electronics Show in January. Uh, one of the big things from that, there was no new hardware announced. Um, but one of the big things we saw is a big focus on artificial intelligence and Google Assistant. Lots of things you can do with that. So like, for example, if you're using it, and I'm I've got one in the room, so hopefully I've turned it off so it won't uh, it won't uh, fire off in the middle of the speech. But you can do things like, hey, Google, read the page or leave a note or turn on the lights at 6 a.m. I particularly like to leave ones that say, like, set an alarm for 4 a.m. Anytime somebody lets me uh, leave a prank on their, their Google Home. We'll talk about some of those pranks as we go on. Uh, but really nice. You can have it leave a note. So in the morning, you get a note, you know, something used uh, in the morning, you know, make sure I do this kind of thing. So you're going to see a lot of focus on the Google Assistant and AI. Uh, speed dial, more interpreter mode and transcript mode. So the ability to, to automatically translate what people are writing on the screen. You can see that with Google Meet with the, the closed caption, uh, but they're bringing interpreter mode. So it'll translate it to another language for you automatically. And additionally, for the privacy and security minded people, uh, they added a feature where you can do things like you can, uh, if Google fires off on something and you didn't intend it to do, you can say, hey, Google, that wasn't for you. And it will remove it and scrub it from its databases. But towards all that stuff, you know, a lot of the things that people uh, don't understand when you're doing transcription, when you're doing uh, computer AI based on speech, uh, I like to talk about this topic so that people understand it. But uh, basically, as I mentioned, you're getting captions, you're getting the recorder app. If you have a Google phone, can do transcriptions. It will do live transcribe soon. And additionally, what you can do, uh, or one of the pro tips I wanted to leave you with, is if you're using these features and you're finding they aren't working very well, well. One of the things that I often recommend to people to consider doing is to learn about clipping and what clipping is, you can see this diagram that I've got here. The blue or the blue sine wave here shows you a normal audio wave, very clean. The green one shows you one that's clipped. What the clipping refers to is that you've exceeded the boundaries of the equipment. And so it goes up to the, the boundary where it would be a nice parabolic curve, but instead it hits a straight line. That causes distortion, that's your, your clipping. And the closer that distortion becomes to fast ra raises in a straight line, fast down raises, it becomes pure power. Uh, so it's a pure power signal on a, on a thing instead of a nice clean wave. So the tip I wanna leave you with is if you're having problems talking to your automatic devices with your voice to speech, uh, yeah, voice to text uh, and things like that, instead of shouting louder at it, 
try whispering instead. When you shout, you're probably clipping the microphone and causing problems where it's getting distortion. So instead, go down to a whisper and you might find out that it works really, really well. Uh, especially in loud environments, uh, Google will, will kill a lot of the background noise. And then if you whisper to it, it will work. So uh, instead of talking louder, whispering. All right. Uh, additionally, big announcement this year, they started the streaming games with Google Stadia. Uh, there's also some neat stuff with doing uh, Chromebooks, for example, with Remote View. NVIDIA announced some neat stuff over the year with that. So if you're using a Chromebook and things like that, you can find you can play quite a few games, uh, quite a few games with that. Uh, kind of an interesting thing. There were no uh, Android tablets announced at uh, CES. Uh, they're still being made and whatnot, but it was interesting just to start off the year uh, that we didn't have any announced. Uh, as I mentioned, though, uh, big, big pushes in artificial intelligence. You had Looker, which is a, a business intelligence organization acquired by Google for $2.6 billion. And I think that that digital transformation was just really part of Google's plan. They're really doing a lot this year on international uh, ex uh, expansion. And of course, uh, you know, we haven't gotten to it yet in the slide deck, but you know, COVID had a huge impact on everybody around the world. So you'll see a lot of changes with things like Google Meet, the ability to do better work from home and just the ability to work better. Uh, additionally, uh, Google Graveyard, uh, we, uh, you know, talk about the, the fact that Google, there's a great website out there that tracks all this, but uh, Google Cloud Print was canceled. It will uh, cancel either December 31st or sometime in January of next year. A lot of times Google does um, uh, slip on the deadlines for canceling things due to customer feedback, but Google Cloud Print is going away in the next month or two. Um, and the Google Graveyard is a great website out there that you can track what things are getting rid of with Google. And as I mentioned, uh, prior to the pandemic, there was a big elephant in the room. You know, Google had uh, laid off people. They had been changing things. Uh, they had been looking at certain things. But as I mentioned, they were focusing on AI, focusing on international growth. Later, they were focusing on what they could do to help people work from home during the pandemic. Uh, but additionally, you're seeing a lot of growth in Google compared to these other platforms with Azure and AWS, as well as other players that are coming up, you know, the Huawei, Badoos, Alibaba, uh, Tencent, et cetera, that are out there, uh, but I'm very confident in Google's planet scale capabilities. What I mean by that is, you know, the, the story that Google had some problems with security, needed new routers, you know, any normal company out there would have put out an RFP and looked for new routers. Instead, Google was like, you know, hey, let's hire two engineers who can make shark proof fiber and let's lay our own network around the world. Uh, that's really what Google did, you know, so they have a, a, a network that nobody else rivals around the world. And that planet scale capability, plus the fact that all of their products are what's used internally, uh, really give them a chance to, uh, excel and i think there'll be a really really long tail that will help them over the years to come uh, some of the new features that we got in the first quarter uh the refining your ability to search in gmail they added chips so you could search for something and then they came up with little chips you could click on to refine the search and drill down to what you're looking for they also added out of office information in more locations. So not just an email, but say, for example, in a document, you might know that somebody is out, out of the office when you add a comment. So you're not waiting on them to give a response back. Uh, Google Meet began working in Safari. And uh, you can use your phone now uh, for audio in a Hangouts Meet video call. So if you, uh, for example, don't have a stable internet connection, you can call in, uh, slow your, show your slides still, and use the audio on the phone, but use the video across uh, your computer. Also, G Suite add-ons. Uh, there'll be other add-ons later on that we'll talk about, but they became uh, general availability for Calendar, Gmail, and Drive. And finally, one of the neat things with the uh, device management is Windows 10 boxes uh, can be managed now with the enhanced security. So some pretty neat features. All of this was before March. Um, in April, you could also use your Android phone as a security key for two-step. Now you can use it also with the iPhone. So if you are using two-step verification and you're aware of some of the minor risks with uh, using text messaging or calls, you can now use your phone, Android or iPhone as a physical token. Um, now, I don't want to scare too many people. There are risks with this. I could deep dive into it, but 99 and a whole point nine percent and a whole bunch more nines probably of your of security issues are solved by using any multi-factor authentication, whether that's text-based or phone-based. There are some minor risks when you use the text messaging, but use them. It's very important. Uh, additionally, the hardware for Hangouts Meet, you can now plug in an HDMI cable and present to it. 
And additionally, as I mentioned here, uh, there is a spoiler that present tab now also works. Now I'm using that right now. Uh, the wonderful part about present to tab, uh, presenting a tab in Chrome with Hangouts Meet is you get high quality video and audio. We'll do a demonstration on that in a little bit here, but um, that feature has really uh, changed because anybody who's done presentations, tried to show a short video, tried to play a, a short amount of text, has had problems or to be garbled or the, the frame rate won't be very good. Uh, that's uh, what this uh, feature now addresses. So all of that was the first quarter of the year and we're already 15 minutes in. So I will have to start talking faster. But next block I have is March through August. So as I mentioned before, we do have the present in a tab spoiler. Um, and uh, with that, you can do high quality video and audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop presenting here. And I'm going to present a new tab. And when I do that, you should now see it. So, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. So for those who are familiar with it, that's uh, what we call a Rick roll when you uh, uh, show Rick Astley and the never going to give you up video. So, um, you know, just a little spoiler there. I actually tried to find a song that I know that's a bunch. It's like a boy band that dances and uh, they're dressed in like 1920s, 1930s suits and they dance throughout Berlin talking about how Berlin is cold in winter. I couldn't find it. I, somebody here on this uh, event will probably remember it, but I tried to show that one. But instead, I did Rick Astley. Um, let me go ahead and switch back to my other presentation now. And we'll do that one more time. Uh, all right. So uh, the presentation and a tab, I hope you guys were able to hear that and see that pretty well. Um, what it does is, as I mentioned, gives you that high quality video and audio that you need. The next change that happened in this time frame, Google Groups. So uh, Google Groups has been long needing a lot of attention. It finally got some love this year. Uh, so in May, they launched the new version. As of right now, I believe it will become the default uh, required interface. Uh, if it hasn't already, I think December 13th was the deadline for that. Uh, new improved mobile interface as well. And you can now use collaborative inboxes in groups. So uh, a great way to just really uh, extend groups to do a lot of business uh, capabilities. You can you know, now have your customer support handled with Google Groups, things like that, that uh, people can all use a collaborative inbox, keep it all on, uh, on one place, et cetera. Uh, Google Docs, uh, these are all in development, I believe, still, but you know, uh, you can now leverage domain specific data. So what that means is like if your company uh, works in a specific industry or has a lot of language or it misspells your own company name, you're going to start to see the Google spelling and grammar suggestions use domain specific information to help make those uh, spelling suggestions better. Uh, the link suggest also will help you. So you start typing something and Google will automatically go ahead and mention what you're probably talking about. And for anybody else, there who has used it, I highly recommend the Google Drive Priority tab and the workspaces that you can set up in there to keep track of files. It's crazy how good it is. I mean, it will know things like, hey, you know, you normally open this document every Monday at 10 a.m. And so it'll bring up an agenda that's for a running meeting that we have, things like that. So these, this AI push, this artificial intelligence, uh, Google is really trying to do it to make your job easier. And if you go create a priority workspace in Google Drive, you'll notice you type a company or type a specific project in and Google will suggest like, oh, you probably want these three or four files in that. And it's crazy how good it is. So uh, try it out if you haven't. Uh, another feature that came out was the preview link. So now if you have a link to a Google Doc in your document, it will go ahead on the web and the mobile client. It will bring up a small version of that. So you, if you don't want to actually click on the link and open it, it'll just make a small square window of it to preview it. Uh, you can also in your documents now fix an image to a specific place or affix it to a specific place. So if you want your corporate logo, for example, always to be one inch by one inch off the uh, top right hand corner, you can now tell that to an image. You now set that in the image uh, uh, options. Uh, and finally, the autocorrect and smart compose, uh, they changed the neural uh, model that was behind it. So the, this is a very technical with the artificial intelligence, but basically they changed it to a neural AI model and it's giving much better grammatical su uh, suggestions. So if you aren't uh, you know, a fan of Google's grammar and uh, smart compose, uh, you might wanna try it after April and see how much better it's gotten. And especially when they uh, really can bring this domain specific data, you're gonna find it uh, being more, more uh, accurate 
accurate with your writing, with your company data, with the data that you're used to writing. And it does get better. It does learn from what you're doing. So uh, use it and uh, it does get better. Uh, the Google editors, as I mentioned, that's you know really just everything. Those nine editors fall under it. Uh, but Google Drive, for example, they got a new status indicator. So you'll see a little cloud uh, next to the status item of the document. Uh, it's up to the right of the document name. It will tell you if you're offline and if it's a cloud, you can click on that little cloud and it'll give you options to take the document offline if that's a, available in your domain. Uh, additionally, the Google Sheets can now filter and sort by text and background color. Uh, this is really useful for things like, for example, something I do, security assessments with uh, what we call stoplight uh, data, so red, yellow, green. Uh, you can now sort and say, show me everything that's got a, a red background, for example. So you can organize things by color. Really great way to sort your uh, data in Google Sheets. Uh, additionally, in Google Drive, in beta, um, is a, uh, a document workflow, kind of a simplistic one, but I think it'll solve a lot of problems for customers where you'll be able to request approvals. Uh, your manager then, for example, will be able to review the document, give an approval on it, and then lock that approved version. So we're starting to see that uh, in beta now, uh, hopefully general availability soon. But the uh, you know with these type of workflows and the ability to approve things, uh, it will uh, really help you. The uh, shortcuts additionally, you can now do a shortcut or a pointer basically to any Google Drive in any file or folder. Uh, that's now live. You can also share folders. This is now GA. Back then it was in beta. I forgot to update this part. Uh, but sharing folders from shared drives, probably the number one request in the past two years. And then additionally, if you're familiar with Monaco, the Monaco IDE will be uh, getting introduced or was introduced uh, for the uh, app script. So Google App Script now has a, an integrated development environment or IDE and it's based on Monaco Cloud. So a uh, really great way to, to just take uh, Google Apps Scripting to the next level. I'll have some links later on for Google Apps Scripting, but you know, if you're looking to be a power user, take a look at it. If you're familiar with doing things like macros in Microsoft Word or, or Excel, uh, you'll find Google Apps Scripting can do just a ton of things and automate things that if you're not looking into it, and you're looking to take your skills to the next level with that, uh, Google Apps Scripting is definitely the way to make yourself a power user. Uh, I'll point that out. Uh, additionally, Google Drive, it's in development, but uh, you can do metadata as a DLP condition. This is good because you can have things like classified as, uh, you know, for example, confidential. So if you have NDAs where documents have to be marked as confidential, you can in the metadata mark it as confidential, uh, confidential, excuse me. And then the DLP can trigger and say, nope, sorry, this can't go externally. It's marked as confidential. So uh, right now you have to manually classify the documents. I'm sure Google will have some AI coming to help with that. Uh, but this has been, uh, you know, something I've wanted for a long time. Uh, some leaks that have occurred with data because of this uh, that would have been easily shut and stopped. Uh, another neat thing, uh, you have drive visitors. You can enable collaboration on the documents with a lightweight authentication flow. There's also this for Google Sites uh, with a pin visitor uh, that's going into uh, uh, beta soon. But this was general available in August 31 to do it with Google Drive documents. So people no longer have to have a G Suite workspace or, or Gmail account uh, to access the documents. They, you can collaborate with them without that. And additionally, for speakers, uh, you can now check your slides, make sure everything's working, all your video and audio is playable, all your permissions are correct. So a nice way to make sure that you're not embarrassed when you get up on stage and do things. Uh, Google Plus has now been renamed to Google Currents. So that happened in July, uh, July this year, July 6th specifically. Uh, and it's intended more for the discussions internally with your company. Uh, G Plus, they were trying to make it the underlying social fabric for G Suite, uh, you know, uh, now a workspace. Uh, didn't really work out, but uh, the nice part is you will now see a single profile photo and uh, Currents has uh, is going to be there for those who use workspace uh, so that you can continue to use the technology that was built for G Plus uh, for that or Google Plus. Uh, for those type of things. All right, with Gmail, uh, as, uh, you can now create and use multi-signatures. You'll have the ability to switch between them when you write an email. So if, for example, you have an email that you write as your support one or one that you use for internal, one you use for external things that has extra information in it, you can now easily do that. You also have the integrated workspace. Uh, so what that means is that in uh, in Gmail, you now have chat, meet, and Gmail, and rooms all in one place, plus tasks and keep, and it's all integrated. We're gonna do a little video here in a moment uh, for that. Uh, but also workspace, or excuse me, specifically Gmail, uh, supports iPad multitasking. So you can have your Gmail open on one side, you can have a document or something like that open on another side. Uh, so uh, you're, if you're using your iPad as almost a desktop replacement, uh, that got a lot better this summer. 
And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. I'm going to switch to this one. Uh, if you're not familiar with the integrated Gmail or if it just went live in your domain, for a lot of domains, it just went live in the last few weeks, um, this video will describe it. So I'll play about a minute of it. And I think it will give a better explanation of exactly what you can expect to see. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit play. In video calling, files and tasks are the foundation of how we work. But because work happens in so many places, it's hard to stay on top of what's important. In the new integrated Gmail, we not only bring the core elements of work together, we make them better together. Now you can access chat, meet, documents, tasks, and more right from Gmail across your devices. In the new integrated Gmail, you can connect any way you want, send an email, chat one-on-one -on -one or in groups, and start or join a meeting all from Gmail. Collaboration is also easier now. For group projects or teams, you can create a room. Rooms give you a shared space to chat. You can also easily access files that have been shared in the room and keep track of what everyone is working on with a shared task list. So with that, I will go ahead and switch back to the presentation. But uh, the the key point that you get there is that things are much more integrated. Uh, some people don't like the left hand side. It takes a lot of real estate. Uh, so if you were used to having long chats there, that's probably the number one complaint. But I've found that I've gotten very used to it and really enjoy the new integrated Gmail uh, feature. So I hope you do too. You can find the video in this chat if you want to watch more and learn more about it. But uh, it does work as well on the mobile phone. And in fact, uh, it, it was quite confusing chat, for a lot of people. And video. Sorry, trying to go to the next slide. There we go. Uh, it was confusing to a lot of people because they'd go to join a meeting and they couldn't figure out why Gmail was launching for Google Meet uh, on their phone. So that has to do with that integration. So, all right, so changes before August in Google Voice. So Google Voice has had some really great movement this year. I think it's starting to become uh, a real good replacement for a lot of products in the telephony world. Uh, you now have Google Voice in Gmail. Uh, you have ring groups. So what that means is that if somebody calls the number, it can ring to multiple phones. Really looking forward to uh, them adding uh, what we call call trees so that, for example, when it rings, you can do like press one for support, two for engineering, three for sales, et cetera. And uh, if that's combined with ring groups, I think you'd have Google Voice being a killer for a lot of other apps that are out there. Uh, you can transfer calls, so you can transfer from one Google Voice number to another. Uh, it's available in Canada as of this summer, and as I, uh, you know, and other things. And you can finally use Google Voice and Google Fi on the same account on the same phone. Anybody, for example, who had a Google Pixel with Google Fi was very frustrated because you couldn't have a Google Voice number on that same phone. That has now been overcome and fixed. Uh, on contacts, probably the, the biggest feature during the summer that was added is the trash feature. So uh, you can't get to the trash if you're on your mobile phone. You can only get to it from the website. But uh, anything that's deleted on your contacts, you now don't have to, 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 to panic because the trash will be kept for 30 days before it's deleted. So you can go into the trash, find things that were accidentally deleted, and restore them. So no more worries about that. Uh, and then probably the, the I say, you know, we talked about the number one feature with the shared drives and the ability to share with people in Google drives that don't have Gmail or workspace accounts. You can now use Google chat with people who also uh, are outside your domain and they can create and you can create guest access rooms as well. So uh, that's a really wanted feature. Uh, so uh, I hope that's uh, very appreciated. Um, you know, one of the things you probably noticed, I don't talk a lot about Google admin features. I try and bring up only some of the bigger ones that I think would be uh, important. I try and bring up things that I think more users would be appreciative about, more people in the audience. Most of your admins are probably keeping up on things. We have those resources at the end where they can keep up on all of them. Uh, but I will bring up some of them. In this particular case, one of the nice part is uh, they have been improving the data regions uh, for handling data at rest. So for those who are in the EU, like many of the people on the listeners here, GDPR compliance, things like that, uh, much uh, better to do, especially for the data at rest and very welcome feature. Uh, dark themes, uh, you know, one of the great things about dark themes is it helps with your uh, eye strain when you're reading in low light. Also really helpful on your battery usage on your phone and things like that. You're starting to see it expand. It's now in editors and chats. There's going to be more announcements, but just Google is embracing the dark themes. They're, 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 becoming more and more available throughout uh, the entire ecosystem so that you can save battery and save eye strain when you're working at night. 
Uh, on the gal Google Calendar front, there's a nice feature where you can set your default meeting. I personally like to set meetings to 20 minutes. I think that's a good length of time for meetings. And you can now uh, show the visualization. So for example, you can say, like for example, I think it's anything under 30 minutes gets viewed as 30 minutes. So if you have a whole bunch of meetings, it will list them so you can still read what's in the meeting. Or you can say, no, show them differently. Uh, and that will help with, if you're like me and you have like, say, for example, four 10 minute meetings in an hour, it won't look like you're double booked. It will look like little tiny uh, thin lines so you can tell that you're not overbooking in your schedule. Uh, additionally, the uh, improved printing. So if you're, you know, for example, traveling, you know, not that any of us have done that this year, but hopefully next year you can print itineraries, it will print in color, you can do more uh, uh, organization that way. And uh, additionally, you can add things from Gmail and Docs in the sidebar to add events. Uh, chat, we'll talk about this, I think, later on, but uh, in chat, you can add directly to your calendar as well. So uh, some great uh, additions there. Uh, the Google Jamboards, this is probably one of the things I've been pretty surprised by this year. A lot of people don't realize you can go to jamboard.google.com. You don't actually have to have the physical article or the physical uh, Jamboard. And you can add, you can do a virtual white screen. So Jams or Jamboards are a, a digital whiteboard. And they're adding a whole bunch of features before the year end. They're all in development. The ability to draw straight lines, the ability to zoom in and out. Uh, create a Zoom offline, edit it while it's offline, et cetera, uh, text boxes and shapes and Z ordering. Um, so all of these features are out there, but if you've never played with it, uh, one of the other features that uh, they've added is, is you can now start a Jamboard in a Meet. And when you do that, all the people on the Meet can go into the Jam and uh, you know collaborate on the specific issues that's going on. So it's a really great work from home digital whiteboard. Uh, really suggest you look at it. You can go to jamboard.google.com to get access to that start a Jam. And as I mentioned, it's an editor just like Doc Sheets, Slides, et cetera. Uh, Google Meet, uh, again, uh, you know, they have uh, no longer have the name Hangouts in the name, but it is called Google Meet. Uh, additionally, they fixed uh, low light mobile uh, mode. So if you haven't used uh, the mobile mode it, when you're in the dark, for example, uh, they've just continued to improve that. They've added the four by four Brady Bunch mode and uh, you can now memorize it. So, you know, in addition to being, you know, like spotlight where you're, you're pinned on one person or you have auto where it goes to the person that's talking, et cetera, it will remember this view from meeting to meeting. So you won't have to go set it all the time. And you can dial out to international numbers. There's, uh, I think, a, a good 30 countries now that you can dial out to. Uh, save a ton of money on uh, doing meetings, especially if you run an international team. So very welcome uh, change there. The uh, background blur replacement. So if you haven't seen this feature, uh, you have to have a certain number of cores. I think it might be pretty hefty. I think it might be four cores required on the machine. Uh, but the blur of your background on uh, when you're talking is really cool. The replacement of the background is amazing, especially because it does it without a green screen. So if you haven't played with that, it's, it's great. You'll also now be able to do breakout rooms, digital whiteboarding, as I mentioned, uh, but also hand raising, polling, and Q&A are also available as well, depending on your version of workspace and what SKU you're on. Uh, we already did the, the high quality video and audio examples, and uh, we you can now filter out sound that isn't speech. I'm sad that's only an enterprise only. I hope Google brings that to others, but I've seen it. It's I mean, people banging on pots and pans and drums, and it just sounds like a little bit of hissing in the background. Uh, so uh, pretty, pretty amazing um, that they can use uh, that artificial intelligence to really bring out the important parts of the document. Um, one of the things in development is the hosts. I think these have been developed or have been deployed now, maybe in uh, GA, but more control, muting, presenting, uh, invite only type of stuff. You can also soon be able to give other people the ability to control that as well. Uh, more hardware meet stuff can be now be done with that uh, AI stuff. So, for example, you can be like, hey, uh, Google, join my meeting, uh, dial a phone number, things like that can be done. So, completely hands free during a meeting. You can also cast your TV. So, if you have a smart TV, uh, you can use your TV for a large screen during your meetings. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, yeah, it already launched uh, part of this. Uh, if you're the meeting creator or you're the calendar owner, you can mute and remove other uh, participants in the, the meeting. So helps with background noise, helps keep the, the meeting going smoothly. On the graveyard news, uh, classic Hangouts is now replaced by chat. Uh, the classic sites is ending and it became the default with a new one back in August. Uh, the Sheets data connector uh, is replaced by connected Sheets, and you can connect that now to BigQuery up to 10 billion rows. Uh, BigQuery is really an amazing tool that uh, I know I keep using the term amazing. i got to come up with a different one. But if you haven't played with it, I mean, uh, querying 
petabytes of data in you know millisecond times is just uh, a game changer for a lot of companies and you know bigquery is the same technology that backs uh youtube uh, search uh, google search as well so you know it has scalability that is uh really um uh, you know, useful if you've got tons and tons of data and you're looking to, you know, for example, one of the things a company that I talked to is you're looking to answer questions where you don't know the questions yet. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you can answer with BigQuery. SQL and things like that, when you know the question you want to ask is amazing. But you want to visualize big data, you want to bring in other sets, you want to add other data lakes that are out there, bring that all in and uh, do a query, use connected sheets. Um, happy to demo that. If anybody wants to reach out, I can show you some real world examples that we've showed to customers uh, that they've been really uh, embracing. Uh, additionally, the less secure deprecation, I don't know its current status, but it was uh, going to be deprecated um, and gotten rid of, but they suspended that due to the pandemic, realizing that it was going to be a lot of heartache for everybody working from home. I think it is a, uh, unfortunately a security issue, so it has to come, it has to get suspended eventually. Uh, so please do keep making uh, plans for the fact that it's going away. Uh, but Google App Maker, Maker is leaving in January. And again, as I mentioned before, Google Cloud Print is leaving in December as well. So uh, pretty sad about that. So all of that brings us through August and uh, we'll get into our last three months finishing through November. You know, today's the third. There hasn't been a whole lot of announcements yet in December, uh, but uh, sometime in the next month or two, I'll do a recap for everything that happened in December. So uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn or follow me there and you can, uh, uh, you know, get an idea of when I'm doing a follow up to finalize out this deck for all of 2020 and start on 2021. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned before, the evil influence of dark themes continues. Uh, G Suite is now workspace. And uh, everything in this blog, any links that you have that, for example, refer to like G Suite updates, uh, things like that will all still work. But the new blog is at workspaceupdates.googleblog.com. Uh, additionally, with Drive and Docs, uh, the share folders from shared drives is now generally available. Um, I think we're going to have a, a great, uh, we're going to show you something about the, the smart cleanup and smart fill, but uh, smart cleanup, it's the column stats is really cool. So if you're not sure about how your sheets is going, they've added some AI to do smart cleanup, but also they can do column stats on the fly. So you can basically find outliers and, you know, if, uh, for example, you're doing some data and you've got one that's, you know, way, way out of, uh, out of whack. Google can do a quick uh, plot graph and show you that kind of thing. Uh, look for your outliers, look for your problems. And and a docs can now do citations in multiple different formats. So if you're used to writing papers for, for school or college or uh, you know, uh, journals, things like that, citations can finally be handled in docs without any add-ons. Uh, additionally, you can now edit uh, Microsoft Office files, both on Android and iOS. Uh, additionally, a nice change is that Office files, when you edit them, now will automatically default. Uh, it will be the default to edit them on the web. Before, it would uh, try and convert them uh, or it would give you a prompt. So now you can edit them by default and not change the underlying format to Google Docs. So if you're using Drive File Stream, if you're working interchangeably with people using Microsoft uh, Word, that will uh, now help that a lot. And if you're not familiar with it, um, one of the great websites that's out there is fonts.google.com. It has about, a, uh, I think the last time I checked, over a thousand fonts available, all free, uh, no licensing needed, no all rights to use in print and web, etc. And with that, they also have some great things. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. They'll tell you what fonts pair with other fonts well. So if you want to have a nice, good, professional looking document, they give you some hints on doing that. And if you stick to using these fonts that are free and available at fonts.google.com in your technologies like Microsoft Office documents, for example, you'll find that the fidelity between Microsoft Office and Google Drive and all the editors is much higher because you're using fonts that are available. Uh, and towards that, you know, Google made a big change in their font fidelity. It only happens in new documents unless you go turn it on, but you'll find that the line spacing for fonts is now based on the font. So if you have a font that uses smaller line spacing, uh, the, the line spacing in Google Docs will now reflect that change. Uh, again, you have to turn it on for pre-existing documents or it's by default on when you create a new document. Uh, and uh, you can now mention documents in it directly. Uh, they'll get a notification about it, but that's coming soon uh, about the notification. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, alluded to it. Um, Add-ons are now generally available in doc sheets and slides, adding to you know Gmail and Calendar, et cetera, that was talked about earlier. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, with Google Contacts deleting trash after 30 days, Google Drive now deletes all trash after 30 days. So uh, this has now been in place for more than 30 days, so I'm not giving a big warning about it, but you know, users should be aware of the fact that trash is automatically deleted. And next summer, we will see a big change coming with storage. Um, you know, if you've read the news, you've probably seen that Google's no longer giving free unlimited storage with Google Photos in certain cases, and the native formats will count against your storage uh, quotas. Uh, the storage quotas are still very, very generous, so you, we won't, we don't anticipate finding this to be a big problem, but they have gotten rid of it uh, for cameras and things like that. Uh, the smart fill feature, um, hopefully this animation works, it is. So the smart fill feature in Google Docs is really amazing. What it does is it looks at things and patterns across uh, multiple columns. If you're familiar with the little plus icon and you know typing in a date or, or two and then highlighting and selecting the plus and doing drag, and it will smart fill that um, and continue the dates, for example, uh, that's great. What smart fill does now is it looks across columns. So in this particular thing, you can see like, for example, they were Hi, Gerald, and then they dragged it down and it was able to go, oh, I want to get the first name from the rest of those columns. Uh, or in particular, it, you typed in one zip code from one of them and it automatically says, oh, the zip code needs to be extracted from the office addresses column and it automatically fills that. So we'll wait for the animation to show yet. So for example, they're taking Gerald's uh, zip code and then auto filling it and it automatically knows that, oh, I should get the zip code out of that. So using that artificial intelligence, getting even smarter, I think uh, you know, the the, the, I, I'm looking forward to feedback from people on how this affects them with their data entry and cleanup of things that they've had to do very, very manually up until now. But that cross-column smart fill, uh, very, very cool. Plus the smart cleanup, plus that uh, outliers and the data visualization that's just automatic without you having to set up anything. You just you know can view it quite quickly. A couple of admin items to mention, not too many here. Uh, service groups can now be part of a group. So uh, there are over 10 new security groups and management controls available. Uh, for admins that are interested, please go read a great article there that talks about them. Uh, the verification status. So if you're used to uh, viewing all the apps that are used in your domain, it will now tell you whether or not they're Google uh, verified or not. Uh, the Google 10 device management is continuing to get more features and now it can tell you what uh, apps are, applications, not really apps, are installed. And the workspace migrate so uh, is in beta. And what it does is that helps you migrate from Exchange, SharePoint, uh, File Shares Box, and now workspace. So if you, for example, have been running, you know, say your company has acquired another company and you're running two workspace instances with trusted whitelists between the two domains, uh, you'll be able to look at importing all your data, getting rid of that other uh, uh, workspace environment uh, now that you can migrate everything into one uh, with an easier tool. And then finally, uh, there's an API now for 2SV, and you'll be able to even sign out users. Uh, so uh, I'm really happy about that one. Uh, dynamic groups, it's currently in beta. Uh, this is awesome. So say, for example, you have uh, users in your workspace that are in Berlin, you can now automatically create a group that's that's like, you know, users in Berlin, and it will dynamically update it. So uh, based on the attributes that are on the account, such as location. Uh, additionally, the group membership can be expired. And finally, uh, you can flag groups. So many people are using groups for security pe uh, re uh, reasons. You can now, instead of having like the group named, like we would name it security group dash and the name of the group, you now don't have to have it. You can flag it as security. And there'll be a granular control so you can, you can give administrators uh, the ability to control security groups or normal groups or vice versa uh, with that level of granularity that is needed. On calendar and chat, uh, you can set your status away in Google uh, Chat. Uh, you also get read receipts, so people who, um, you, know, you know when people have gotten your direct messages only, not your public messages. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you can add, so you can you know basically tell Google to add an event. If you're talking about something on a specific day, you'll get a highlight link and you can add it to, to calendar quite easily. Uh, also a great feature, if you're using Android 11, you no longer have to use two different calendars to view your personal and work profile if you're using mobile device management. Now the one calendar can view all of your items together. Excuse me a second. And then uh, finally, uh, you can make a Google Meet your add-on, or you know, if you use Zoom or another uh, competing op option, you can set the default video conferencing in Google uh, Calendar so that you know when you create a meeting, it doesn't just automatically default to Meet. Or if you're like me, and sometimes you have customers that are using Zoom and they're using Meet or they're using Teams, and you end up with like 
two or three different, um, well, two really, uh, you end up with like two links for a video uh, on a calendar invite. And you're like, okay, I wonder which one's the right one. This will hopefully stop ending, uh, let's put an end to that issue. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, continuing that with meet and more changes with meet, uh, you can now get an attendance report. So name, email, and length of the time that they were on the meeting uh, includes the time they joined and, and ended. Uh, you also now have a larger 49 person Brady Bunch grid, uh, the um, no green screen needed concept, breakout rooms, virtual hand raising, all of this is uh, now in GA, along with accepting knocks and bulks. Um, I still think that needs improvement. I think, uh, you know, for example, when I'm giving speeches, it can be somewhat disruptive to the speaker. So hopefully we'll see some more improvement in that. Uh, you can also dial into Jamboard, excuse me, to Meets from uh, another eight countries. And I've put the full list of international uh, places that are supported. So if you're interested in your country and whatnot, uh, but the Jamboard, as we mentioned, is included in Meet now. And my final point is just to mention some graveyard news from this quarter. Uh, AngularJS, don't panic, Angular is still around, but the original version was, it was rebranded as AngularJS. That will be ended next year on December, 2021. Uh, Hangouts and Chrome apps will be ended in June of next year. And finally, Expeditions and Tour Creators will also end in June of 2021. Other than that, at the end of my speech here, uh, what you'll see is a whole bunch of resources. I won't go into these too much because I'm running low on time, but you know, Google Next and I.O. are big developer conferences and uh, user conferences for Google, uh, all canceled for this year, hopefully coming back next year. If you're interested in Workspace, here are some resources you can use to get information about the changes that are coming on them. Uh, you can find me also in the Google Cloud Connect community. Uh, there's also release calendars. I mentioned the power users page here. So there's hack challenges you can use to get more familiar with Google Apps scripting. So this is uh, great for people who are looking to be power users. The Welcome Center also includes a lot of vis uh, uh, videos for people who've never used uh, Workspace before and need an introduction to it as well. If you're interested in just Google updates, you can find the, all the updates around Google under their blog.google slash products. Uh, the search engine journal has great information on SEO. Uh, the nine to five Google has great information on Google hardware covering really everything, pixels, nest, and really just everything from alphabet uh, is all there. If you're interested in GCP, you can go to the cloud Google uh, blog for there. And uh, uh, a great resources out there. I call it, uh, you know, defeating the hexagons of doom. If you're familiar with GCP, all their icons are just a hexagon with a logo in it. It can be very difficult to remember what all of them are. Uh, there's a great uh, PDF out there that's uh, managed on GitHub, uh, community sourced uh, for everything that's available on Google Cloud Platform in four words or less. So uh, a really great thing. So other than that, uh, thank you so much for hosting me. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I will have the slides published on LinkedIn. Uh, they will also be up on dinoweb.com slash downloads. Uh, big thanks to Shoshana Bro uh, Broadman. Uh, she's the launch program manager for Google Workspace. She helps review all this stuff. And other than that, I will hand it back to the moderators. I don't know if we have time for q and I think we do, but I'll stop presenting and uh, excellent. And I'll look for the Q&A. Okay, cool. Thank you, Kevin. This was again, like really full of news and we can see that a lot happened over the last year. I think maybe it's it's even the year with most changes and feature improvements and so on in the history of Google Cloud, I guess, because there was so many news. Uh, for us, one of the most interesting things this year was the new integrated experience of the Google solutions. Also, of course, because we are giving a lot of trainings and doing a lot of change management and so on. And of course, this impacted us a lot. Uh, what is your own experience with the new integrated hub? with all the integrations in, in Gmail and so on. Uh, what's your personal uh, meaning on, on this topic? Yeah, so I alluded a little bit to that during my talk. Uh, I originally found it a little frustrating because it took so much real estate, for example, on the web on the left-hand side. Uh, I've gotten used to that and found that the, the benefits of having everything integrated in one space overcome what I was used to before. So what I mean by that, for example, you know, I work at a company with about 70 people. And so, you know, my chat box was pretty large with the people that I was 
chatting with recently and now you can only view maybe like the last two or three people that you have chatted with whereas before i would see like the last 30 that i chatted with so the 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 usage of real estate was a little frustrating um i uh, also did have some confusion for a day or two uh with uh, the phone app especially because you know my phone auto updated and all of a sudden i was trying to launch meets and i couldn't get into them and then i realized i had to launch them with the google uh, with the the Gmail app instead of with the Meet app, uh, but overall uh, I have become a big fan of it. I think that the integrated uh, it really it, it Google has uh, has shown that they're the way that they're leading the way on how it should be done. The, you know, I'm finding that I don't have to switch tabs to five other things to get things done because it's all in one place. Cool. Um, so obvi obviously there were a lot of changes during the last year and uh, we would like to know what was the biggest improvement for you and for your work. So the best one, maybe. <laughs> the best one had to be uh, sharing folders from shared drives mm -hmm. or from team drives, uh, you know, as it used to be called. That That's almost certainly uh, the number one feature. Uh, I also just really, uh, I would say it was something I didn't mention, but I, I love all the changes with Meet. Uh, I don't find that I have to use other platforms that I used to have to use for various reasons. Uh, the, the, the background blur, you know, I'll show it to you if, uh, you know, I'm sure people have seen it, but, you know, if you haven't seen the background blur, uh, it's it's quite neat. You can go in, you can change it to be slightly blurred. You can change it to be really blurry. Um, and additionally, you know, I don't have a green screen or anything, but you know, you can change it to be like a background. And it's pretty amazing how accurate it is. Uh, sometimes when people are wearing headsets, that's the biggest problem. But um, by the way, I'll move out of the way. This is one of my favorite photos. This is one of the race cars that I used to sponsor and uh, it had exploded. And that's actually taken during the daytime uh, of that meeting. And um, what do you call it? When the driver came in, he was fine. I told him he had to go out and do it again because he didn't get the logo straight in the photo. So um, <laughs> he blew an engine and dumped all the oil onto the exhaust, exhaust manifold. But that fire was so bright that it was just bright blue, uh, really, when it, when it happened. Uh, and that was taken in bright, sunny afternoon, but it blew the aperture of the camera. Uh, that's how bright it is. So uh, I find the the blur uh, and the background replacement to be quite neat, uh, good for branding, also good not for seeing my messy living room when I have a meeting from home, et cetera. Uh, when they come up with one that like, you know, makes it look like I'm wearing a suit and not pajamas, I think that'll be my next one for 2021. So. <laughs> So you were like telling us so much about new features and so on. And, and even for example, for tools like Sheets, there are so many improvements and like with autofill and so on. And uh, my next question would be, if you are talking to someone that is used to working with Microsoft Excel, for example, and they are working like in the way they did for the last 10 years. And on the other hand, you have those improvement and so fascinating things that are happening there with AI and so on. And how would you go into a discussion with someone that's still working with the kind of old way of working? And on the other hand, you have all those improvements and so many collaboration capabilities and so on built in in Sheets these days. Uh, are there some arguments you would use in order to yeah, just, um, just show them uh, how this can really transform their work? Absolutely. Well, you know, my job as a technologist, I'm I'm actually pretty agnostic when it comes to hardware. You know, one of the reasons I'm such a fan of Google is because I think they have an incredible technology. Um, but I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not anti Microsoft, for example. I think they make, you know, Microsoft Excel is one of the, the best products made in the last 30 years. Uh, Microsoft Word is amazing. It's got some incre incredible features. Where Google shines is especially in the collaborative nature. So if you're used to working on spreadsheets and you need to work on them with two or three other people and you're used to emailing them back and forth to people, getting the final versions, you know, think about using Google Sheets instead. You know, you can work on it in collaboration with other people. You can work on it during a, a meeting where you're all seeing the same document. You see, if you've not seen it, you see little colored boxes go around on the, on the document. People can edit the document all uh, in tandem with each other. And uh, you know you end up with a finished document that's reviewed, and with this other things like you know I talked about the document 
workflow approval process that's coming. I think you're going to have a really good workflow that's part of uh, this collaborative capability. So normally I try and, and show people what will make their job easier. That's what technology does. You know, sometimes when I'm in my cybersecurity role and I have to put on my cybersecurity hat, I do have to apologize to people. Like, you know, I tell them like, you know, hey, I have to do this change for security reasons. I know it's going to add a little bit of grief to your day, but I'm aware of it and I've done everything I can to lower the friction for that. So like, for example, with two-step verification and multi-factor authentication, I tell people, this will stop 99.9% .9 of hacks that are out there. It will give you a sleep well at night factor. So switch to it. Same thing with Google Sheets. I tell people the collaboration capabilities, the equivalency of what it's got out there, the quick AI that it can bring to bear, it will make your job easier. You will have a short hill to get over to switch things. Um, but at the same time, there are, I'll say, 1% or less at companies that are power users with Excel. They're doing something like maybe something with more than 2 million cells. They're doing something that just uh, is using incredibly complex macros. I'm not looking to make those people switch. I would want them to use uh, Microsoft Excel combined with something like Drive File Stream, store the files up on Google Drive, tie into the entire ecosystem there. Other people can load the files if they need to as well. Use the Drive File locking features that are built into Drive File Stream with Excel. Um, so like I said, use the technology that's right for the job, but in a very, very high percentage of cases, you know, anecdotally 99%, Google Docs and Google Sheets, collaboration capabilities plus the AI will absolutely trump the features that you might have had with older desktop applications. Sorry, very long answer, for, but I hope that answers it. I mean, that's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting and important question. So uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts on that. Uh, if you could just dream a little bit and, and uh, yeah, ha if you have one wish for 2021, is there any feature where you say this would be really amazing is if this would uh, become part of Google Workspace? Anything you are looking out to especially? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, there's so many things it does that I've dreamed of over the years. You know, things like... Uh, you know, I typically in a non 2020, I travel a lot and Google's done amazingly on their AI to take, um, you know, my flight information and hotel information, and automatically put it on a calendar, uh, you know, just uh, things that make people's lives easier and better and faster and more automated um, help a ton. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I'd like to see in workspace, uh, the EU has this some, but, you know, for example, in France, um, you're not allowed to, to receive email when you're off work. I think um, if anything that work from home has shown is that a lot of people don't have a good ability to have a work-life balance and uh, an ability to turn off. So I think something in workspace where it's, you know, like, hey, I if it's not, you know, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., um, there should be something like an emergency mode only. So I would say some sort of ability to say, I'm not available outside these hours uh, with some sort of emergency way to escalate it would be my number one wish for next year. And besides, you know, for workspace, but just, you know, having the pandemic uh, ended as safely as possible and more people able to travel and life getting back to normal. Thank you, Kevin. So, um, yeah, thanks for this roundup of a lot of news from 2020. And uh, we are looking forward for further collaboration in 2021, of course, Thank um, you. together with you. So, uh, yeah, I, I think what time do we have right now in your location? It is just shy of 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'm just outside of Washington, D.C. in a small town called Fairfax, Virginia. OK, then have a nice lunch. Actually, <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. And see you soon, Kevin. You have a nice dinner, and uh, you know, uh, enjoy a beer on me for me or for me. <laughs> Will do, yeah. <laughs> and we are still looking forward to having one in Germany together. Actually, so. I'm very much looking forward to that. I was telling them that uh, I'm very much. I think it's nearby in Mainz, uh, but the, the Gutenberg Museum, the printing museum. Very much looking forward to visiting that and and Weisbaden and you know where where you guys are located. So hopefully next year. Okay. See you. Bye. Mm -hmm.